um, that's what actually draw, uh, drew me to it um, so much was that really it, it, you're able to test um, all sorts of monetary policy in different industries and different utilities. Um, unlike with fiat currency, it's kind of like one size fits all. Whereas with cryptocurrency, you're able to really tailor um, the monetary policy to um, what the token wants to do. That is Mitch Travers, and this is episode 6 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. Welcome to episode 6 of the Blockchain Pro Podcast. I'm your host, Adriana Bellotti, and today's guest is Mitch Travers. Mitch has recently joined the team at Brontech, an Australian blockchain startup, doing research, product development, and community management. We caught up at Blue Chile, a co-working space in Sydney, a couple of months ago, and here's our chat. Hope you enjoy it. Okay. We are recording. Hi, Mitch. Oh. Hey. How you doing? Yeah, I'm really well. I'm really well. You having a good Monday? Mm-hmm. Excellent. It's a great way to start the week. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so let's dive right into it. This is something that I've been saying now for a while. My, my first thing is always, let's dive right into it. Yeah. Um, what were you doing right before you learned about crypto? Okay. Well, yeah, that's actually... Um, quite an interesting story because unlike many people in the blockchain space, I um, was really unaware of crypto up until about a year and a half ago. I had like, when I was in school, uh, a couple people were toying with um, Bitcoin and and things like that, but it really wasn't relevant um, to me or my passions or what I was working on at the time. Um, So I'll take us back to when I first finished my undergraduate degree in um, political, economic, and social science. Um, I kind of I didn't really have a direction like many art students coming out of school. So what I did, I went traveling um, for three months to America and Canada. Um, I really like hiking, so I decided to go to all the various national parks and things like that. And I found that um, that was quite quite an experience for me because it was one of the first times in many years that I'd really disconnected from the internet. And I find that that was such a valuable experience because you couldn't really critically analyze what the how to leverage the internet mm-hmm. to find my passions and things like that until I really escaped it. Oh, it's cool. kind of like, yeah, the idea of escaping your social media echo chamber um, before you can sort of work out how you can use it um, to find a passion or a project or something you want to work on. Uh, so I spent that time traveling. I tried to find the problem I would like to solve Uh, in the world, as many um, students try to do. And at the time, uh, that problem was uh, really the issue of truth um, on the internet Mm -hmm. and how to derive, like, sort of information and what information you should receive. And that's one thing about the internet is there's there's plenty of information, but it's about knowing where to look. Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) That's, um, yeah, really what I, I wanted to work on. So one of the first projects I... I thought about was um, to try and help fellow students in international affairs and I wanted to create like an open source publication uh, for these students. Uh, So upon getting back, um, exposing myself to the internet again, um, I then decided to look around for these open source publications Mm -hmm. and that's how I first discovered Medium, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, for those who don't know, an online, um, it's a platform for readers and writers. Uh, It's... Like I would say a mix between news and blogging. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a really great resource, and I think it was one of the best things I discovered last year. 
Um, and many of the cryptocurrency projects and ideas of cryptocurrency and decentralization are published on Medium. Mm -hmm. So that was how I was first exposed um, to okay. the ideas and, and things like that. So you weren't exactly working at the time. No, I was working. You were in a, just like a, a you were studying job. and yeah. sort of trying to find what you wanted to work with. Exactly. Yeah. So I was a, as many um, art students do. I was applying for all the graduate roles at the mm -hmm. big four consultancy firms at various government things. I made it to step two of one, step one of the other, and I didn't really get anywhere. And I found that um, upon going through these processes, it was. I was finding it really inefficient um, to, to find my passion that way, um, to just work in a, an organize, a really big organization. Uh, so instead, I decided to just um, research on the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, I, that's when I found cryptocurrency okay. and started reading every white paper under the face of the sun. And oh, there are so many. There are so many. <laughs> <laughs> some are good, some are bad. And yeah. Um, some use some really, really interesting ideas as well. I'm um, trying to change the world in quite profound ways, which I found back to my interest um, right. was really the reading all of the white papers and um, my background in um, learning political economy at uni mm -hmm. as well. That put me in good stead for being able to um, understand the token mm -hmm. economics that these. Um, white papers are, are trying to do mm -hmm. um, and really assess them against each other, uh, which one will work, which one won't, and things like I, that. I mean, I guess when you have this sort of background, it's easier to spot the ones that yeah. really make absolutely no sense. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. don't even know how to write monetary policy. And yeah, that's, that's the whole point. That's a cool thing about crypto because it's sort of like a financial, revolu financial revolution from all of the Knowledge disciplines, yeah. yes. Really yeah, cool. exactly. Um, that's what I actually draw, uh, drew me to it um, so much was that really it, it, you're able to test um, all sorts of monetary policy in different industries and different utilities. Um, unlike with fiat currency, it's kind of like one size fits all. Whereas with cryptocurrency, you're able to really tailor um, the monetary policy to um, what the token wants to do, like the utility. Whatever problem you're trying exactly. to solve. Exactly, yeah. That's cool. So mm. now you're working in the crypto industry. Yeah, you've, so <laughs> yeah, recently you've joined a company. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that was really, really exciting. So throughout that whole process, um, I really identified um, the crypto space as something I wanted to get into. And um, in order to do that, I really had to leverage the internet and the network effect and things like that and find out what I wanted to um, do in cryptocurrency, so by reading all of these white papers I was able to also identify what role I, I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And that I found out that that role would be really um, community management, um, as well as we were talking about the monetary policy, so uh, the product development mm -hmm. uh, as well um, for cryptocurrencies. And uh, that's how I began, I tried to get close to as many projects as possible. The beauty of crypto um, projects is most they're almost all transparent, they're all on Telegram. So you can literally um, sign up into the Telegram and ask the founder a question about yeah. their project. Uh, so that's how I began um, searching for work in, in crypto. I went into all of the various Telegrams and asked people questions, started to grow relationships and friendships. It's actually um, how I met you, yeah. <laughs> uh, through a, a community meetup and um, various other community um, management talks mm -hmm. and things like that in the uh, Sydney blockchain scene. And uh, yeah, building upon that, I discovered Brontech, um, which were, was excellent and who I'm working for now. Um, we're trying to create a decentralized data marketplace. Mm -hmm. So basically, provide individuals the tools um, to take control of their own data and then facilitate an ecosystem so we can give um, these users the ability to monetize that data in a secure, decentralized and consent-driven mm -hmm. driven way, um, which is a really quite neat. I applied for the, the job and yeah, the rest is history now, I'm working on the project. And how long have <laughs> you been working with them now? Um, just over two months now. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So you've you've already learned most of the things that you have to learn about yeah. the project itself. Now you can dig deep yeah, into yeah and find the where problem. I can provide value. Yeah. All right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, which is neat. Um, so. And I, in your community management role, 
Mm-hmm. What kind of things do you do like to build a community? Yeah, so um, that's <laughs> really quite interesting. I mean, it's only been two months. So it's hard, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in, in Maro, um, personally, I write um, the, the blogs mm-hmm. um, for Brontech. So that's one way um, to build a community is you have to put content and information out there. I always, um, when whenever you're trying to build an, a network, I go to this one analogy. Um, one of my favorite authors on Medium, Daniel uh, Jeffries, he, he says that a network is not is an infinite pie, um, which means that in order to get value from the network, you actually have to provide information and value. Yes. And then people will then also provide you information mm-hmm. and value out of that. It's not something for you to take. Yeah. Um, it's a pie that you provide value to and it gives back. So that's a, it's sort of one way I go about my role. Uh, mm-hmm trying to create content, provide value to all of our users as much as possible, uh, and then build a relationship with them based on that. Hmm. Uh, Another aspect of the community management is um, customer service too. So um, uh, one of Bromtech's products is Brom Rewards, Mm -hmm. um, which is an app which rewards you for scanning your receipt data. Mm -hmm. Um, We provide you cryptocurrency in return Mm -hmm. uh, for access to that data. Mm of course, that app then has um, a whole bunch of users which I need to communicate with. That's, that's how we're going about distributing our token. Mm-hmm. Uh, is through signing people up to c- take control of their data, contribute data, mm-hmm. and um, go from there. So it's one way to build a community is through um, providing utility and a product, and mm-hmm. the other way is to um, provide value through the internet and content. That's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, do you have a favorite thing? Uh, for me, I, my favorite aspect of the role, I think, is writing um, okay. and trying You're to... You're good at it, too. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, read my work, everyone is listening. It's good. Um, but, yeah, I think writing, because for me, writing is a way... Um, you, you don't really become a great writer until you understand um, an issue completely, mm-hmm. because one of the arts of writing is uh, to, to write something in the most um, simple way possible so anyone can understand what Mm -hmm. you're trying to write. Mm -hmm. So if you find that you're reading a a blog post or a paper with heaps of complex language and you don't really get it, it means that it it hasn't really worked on you. Um, What you need to do when you write is that you need to make as many audiences accessible as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's one of the skills that I really like working on. And I think in cryptos, we are at this point now where Everybody that's in the community is knowledgeable into a discipline that is needed, but we mm-hmm. need to sort of reach the audio yeah, the mainstream. group of people, the ma- mainstream, yes, and yeah. then writing things simply is like the way to go. It's right? essential, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, trying to get it out there into the mainstream so everyone can understand really the crypto revolution and how profound it is um, is important. So, yeah, I, I like being the voice for that, or the pen, okay. <laughs> you could say, yeah. Okay. Oh, the, uh, yeah, exactly, all the <laughs> tip tap type. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, do you see in this space or in, in your company, are you guys hiring or do you see where the skills shortage, so shortage is going? And th- um, so in, in blockchain, one of the, like a common trend is that the need for developers. Mm-hmm. So that's a common trend amongst most cryptocurrency startups. Um, one other skill that I think is is probably lacking is um, the business development and the sort of the corporate relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, because one thing that you do when you create a, a blockchain startup is more often than not um, you run an ICO or an um, initial coin offering or, or something of that nature, and that's asking for funding before you have access to these business Mm -hmm. um, relationships and access to a constant stream um, of revenue Mm -hmm. and many i well it's of my opinion that i think many cryptocurrency startups are gonna uh, fall short when they don't have a method of building these relationships um, with the corporates who they're trying to sell their products to and things like that so i think that that skill is going to be really important um, for the blockchain space to to grow and acquire um, is this sort of like business um, networking. 
technical skill. Okay, business yeah. development. Business development, that sort of that sort of role is mm -hmm. important. That can be anything from marketing to community management to sales to, um, yeah. The it's like the company facing. Yeah. Uh, the public facing. Uh, Wrong, yeah. Roles in the, in a company because the developers they sit in the background yeah, doing yeah. all the tacky cool stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So the company facing role. I think that that's um, there's really a void um, with that. There are a few great protagonists in the Australian cryptocurrency s um, space that you can follow on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, or all sorts of things like that um, mm -hmm. to develop those ideas and I, I find that yeah that's the best way to develop your own ideas is you expose yourself to the best in the industry and yes um, it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> how do you explain blockchain simply like to to your friends or family people who don't really good question I, was, I actually had this question the other night um, I was speaking to my nana um, she's of course not as tech savvy as myself and um, she was, how old your nana um, I, uh, she's just turned 70. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, she was asking me about my work, obviously, and I was like, oh, yeah, so we're working on a blockchain. Um, at a, I'm working at a blockchain startup, and she was like, oh, okay, so what's blockchain? And the best way I describe it um, to someone who has zero knowledge is uh, pretend that you go into a room and you have everyone can see each other and look at each other, and they're all bookkeepers. And that's the distributed ledger aspect of the blockchain, is that everyone can see each other, look at each other, however they can't see what each other are writing down. And it's only when all of these people write exactly the same thing, which are all the computers which confirm a transaction in a blockchain network, that a transaction can be verified. So that's a distributed ledger aspect. So it's just a whole bunch of bookkeepers in a room. And the important part is that that is decentralized or distributed, so the millions of computers around the world are all confirming that. Uh, the second aspect is the cryptographic aspect, and that was more difficult <laughs> <laughs> to explain to my nana, but basically it were, I, I explained it by um, talking about sort of like letters, mm -hmm. or in the past you didn't want the mailman to read your letter, mm -hmm. so what you did in the past was you put a wax seal mm -hmm. on your letter. That's a very good example. Yeah, and um, that wax seal, if you broke it, obviously no one can replicate your wax seal. So that's what the cryptography does. So when you join these two people, the bookkeepers in the room, all with wax seals, and put those two technologies together, it gives you a blockchain, in oh, basic terms. Yeah, in basic terms, yeah. that's a good one. Um, okay, do you have any tools or resources online that you go to on a regular basis that could help someone that, for example, wants to do this, a similar role that yeah. you're doing now? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so as I was saying before, Medium is one of my favorite tools. Mm -hmm. um, that's because I, li I love reading myself. So I'm able to not only get knowledge on blockchain and things like that, but also personal interest, mm -hmm. uh, things, personal development, things as well. I find that Medium's great because really the individual is the one who's writing a mm -hmm. blog post on Medium. So you're building your opinion based on um, opinion pieces, individuals. So mm -hmm. you're not really searching for truth there. You're just trying to identify if you like that person or trust that person's knowledge. So Medium's one of my favorites. I also use um, sort of many, well, many different like knowledge sources. Mm -hmm. So one is uh, Reddit mm -hmm. for the various subreddits and on like, yes. like different <laughs> Reddits, there's so much information there. It's hard to identify what's good and bad. It's uh, so good to waste time there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> lose days in Reddit. <laughs> and not just lo looking it's at It's like being memes. abducted by aliens, and that's I think that's probably why their little icon is an alien. Yeah, yeah. They, they have it's supposed to go through that voice, like hours, times elapse, and you come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so Reddit's great, but um, one way to, uh, one source that I use the internet for is actually online communities. Uh, which is really related to my job as well. Uh, one way to make information easier to digest on the internet, I find, is you have um, other people of similar interests and similar ideas um, to yourself, mm -hmm. all in a community online, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can bounce those ideas off each other, and each everyone has their own interests, so you find out different things. So, um, 
the places that I go to the internet most are often um, either Facebook groups, there are a whole bunch of different communities on Facebook, there are also different communities in um, more decentralized aspects, so on Steemit, mm -hmm. um, there are different protagonists on Steemit or authors on Steemit who create content. Uh, so yeah, it's really navigating these different communities and trying to work out, um, uh, like, get snippets from them, in a way, is, is how I use the internet. All right. Yeah. That's pretty good. Any final words of wisdom for um, the next generation of crypto <laughs> workers? I, I think uh, I probably just want to reiterate the um, point I made about the infinite pie and the best way to create a network is... The internet is just a, a huge network, a, a global network. And if you want to leverage the power of the internet, you're going to have to provide some sort of value. So find where you can, where your passion lies and where you can best provide that value. Mm -hmm. Make yourself vulnerable, because vulnerability um, is actually, uh, making yourself vulnerable is actually a sign of confidence. Um, so, okay, so what do you mean by make yourself vulnerable? So put yourself out there. Um, Ask questions, talk to people. Ask, exactly. Because, yeah. So, yeah, going back to the best way to use the internet is um, contribute content, mm -hmm. contribute ideas, ask people questions, do things like that. Uh, because when you provide value to a network, it will provide value to you, just mm -hmm. in the same way the infinite pie mm -hmm. does. So, yeah, make yourself vulnerable, put yourself out there. Go hiking and forget about the internet yeah. for a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> and work out why it really exists. Yeah. Okay, that's really good. Hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's and been an absolute pleasure. Good luck. You're just at the start of your journey with Brontag. Yeah. So um, we'll I'm see, expecting see to see goes. great things. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. That was Mitch Travers. He is so motivated. I love it. I have no doubt he'll accomplish lots throughout his career. If you like this episode or have any follow-up questions for Mitch, please do get in touch. You can find him on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'll let the links on the show notes. For all updates, you can follow BlockchainPP on Twitter. And you can also get in touch with me. As usual, my profile links are also on the show notes. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe. If you have a minute to share it with you, someone who might enjoy it, that would be amazing. It would really help to spread the word. Um, if you have any suggestions for future episodes, do get in touch. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you at the next block. Bye.